search and rescue on the way for fallen Indonesian flight. No need to panic by amidst lockdown speculation. Meanwhile, a statement from the Malaysian Embassy in Jakarta has confirmed that no Malaysian citizen was involved in the mishap. The Boeing 737 aircraft carrying 62 passengers, including the crew, was reported to have lost contact with the control tower after taking off from the Sukarno Hatta Airport, Jakarta, for Pontianak at 2.36 p.m. West Indonesian time. The last contact of the aircraft with the control tower was at 2.40 p.m. East Indonesia time. The flood situation in Trungano, Klantan and Perak is reported to be improving this morning with a drop in the number of evacuees while Pahang saw a slight increase and Johor remain unchanged. Well, according to the Social Welfare Department's Info Disaster Portal, more than 40,000 people are still taking shelters at relief centers or PPS in the five states. In Pahang, the number of flood victims at 280 relief centers increased slightly to 26,540 people as at 7 a.m. compared to 26,496 last night. Well, Timurlo still has the highest number of evacuees with 12,045 individuals followed by Maran, Pekan and other districts. In Trungano, the number of evacuees decreased slightly to 10,086 from 10,439 yesterday, and they were housed at 43 PPS. And State Disaster Management Committee Secretariat Chief Lieutenant Colonel PHA Adam A. Rahman said only two districts were still affected, namely Kamaman with 8,626 victims and Dungun with 1,460, while in Hulu Trungano, all the evacuees were allowed to return home yesterday evening. In Kelantan, 2,990 evacuees are being housed at 35 relief centers in the state, down from 3,697 reported yesterday. Pasir Mas recorded the highest number of evacuees at 1,510 people, followed by Kuala Krai with 1,232 and Tanah Merah with 248. In Perak, the situation in flood-hit areas continued to improve when only 93 people were still housed at two relief centers, namely 77 in Hilir Perak and the remaining 16 were in Hulu Perak as of 7 a.m. In Johor, the number of evacuees remain unchanged at 479 at nine relief centers in three districts. The Public Works Department, PWD, has received a total of 267 reports of damaged roads and bridges, slope failures and sunken roads in six states affected by flooding. PWD Director General Dato Mohamed Zulkifli Sulaiman said the six states are Kelantan, Johor, Pahang, Perak, Trunganu and Solango. Well, Dato Mohamed Zulkifli said the damage reported included 141 roads, 58 slope failures, 8 sunken roads and 3 damaged bridges. He also said that he has instructed all the PWDs in the affected states to monitor the situation so as not to endanger users. Well, earlier, he was briefed by Clanton PWD Acting Director Mohamed Suhaili Ismail regarding a landslide incident last Sunday at kilometer 92 of the Jalan Gua Musang Lodging. Damages were reported along a two-kilometer stretch, which was closed to vehicles from last Sunday. But one lane was reopened yesterday after clearing works were completed. The PWD Director General added that the road needs 5.3 million ringgit to be repaired and noted that further studies would be conducted to find out the actual cost of repairs.
Well, the people will be given enough time to make preparations before any measure is implemented to control the recent surge in COVID-19 cases. And Senior Minister for Security, Dados Riz Maltabra Yaakob, advised the people to refrain from panic buying following speculations that the government would be re-implementing the Movement Control Order, or MCO, nationwide. The people are also urged not to be easily taken in by fake news or assumptions made by various quarters on the decision to be announced. Tak payah nak pilih. Banyak yang viral tu semuanya fake, semuanya palsu. Kita ni kadang-kadang selalu percaya kepada fake news. Itu menyebabkan kita pendek dan membuat tindakan-tindakan yang tidak patut. Ya, tunggu dulu pengumuman daripada kerajaan. Kalau apa pun keputusan, kerajaan takkan... Terus, on the, on the spot, kalau buat apa-apa pun, dia mesti ada beri ruang 2, 3, 4 hari dan sebagainya. Dan kita pun tak tahu apa yang nak diumumkan nanti. Konon-kononnya, total lockdown. Total lockdown, seperti PKP dulu. Saya percaya tak mungkin. Prime Minister Tantri Moirin Yassin will make a special announcement tomorrow regarding the action to be taken by the government to deal with the recent spike in COVID-19 cases. Meanwhile, in another development, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri urged non-governmental organizations, NGOs, intending to channel relief assistance to coordinate with the Disaster Operations Control Center, or PKOB, of the affected areas. He said the government will not stop NGOs from helping, but there must be some form of coordination in the distribution process to prevent COVID-19 transmission. Mission. Health Director General Tantri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said five new clusters were reported yesterday, namely the Symphony Magazine Cluster, Pasai Cluster and Palut Cluster, as well as two workplace clusters identified as the Micro Cluster and Technologi Kasidang Cluster. Elaborating further, in a statement released, Sansri Noor Hisham said the Symphony magazine cluster, which involves the districts of Timor Laut and Sabrang Prai, Utara and Pulau Pinang, recorded 44 COVID-19 cases, Pasai cluster in Cebu and Muka, Sarawak, 38, and Palu cluster in Dumun Trunganu, 10. Besides that, the micro cluster in Johor Bahru, Kulai, Pontian and Kota Tinggi, Johor, recorded 97 cases, while the Technologi Kasidang cluster in Malacca, Tengah, Malacca, 18. Tansri Dr. Noor Hisham said thus far, 581 clusters had been reported, with 325 clusters declared inactive, including six yesterday, comprising the Bukit Gamo cluster, Erima cluster, Baloi cluster, Tal Talang Talang Cluster, View Colombong Cluster, and Jalan Kilang Cluster. This brings the total number of active clusters being monitored to 256, with 58 recording additional cases yesterday. Well, water supply in Kuala Lumpur, Petaling and Hululangat, which experienced unscheduled water supply disruptions due to sewer pipe insulation work yesterday, has been fully restored at 6 p.m. yesterday. Pengurusan Aislango Sandir and Burhan, or Aislango Corporate Communications head Elena Basri said the company thanked users for their patience and cooperation during the disruption period. In a statement, Elina said I Slango has also requested the cooperation of consumers to report any incidents of leaking or broken pipes in Slango, Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya to ensure remedial action can be taken immediately. While she added that consumers are also advised to obtain official information on water supply disruptions through all I Slango official communication mediums, namely the I Slango application, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and the I Slango website. The water supply disruption occurred due to a broken pipe in Jalan Sering, Taman Sungai Sering in Chiras recently. Well, coming up, Bank Islam to offer loan assistance for flood evacuees. Stay with us. Well, Bank Islam Malaysia Burhad is offering financing repayment flexibility for customers affected by the floods via its Prihatin program. In a statement released recently, the bank said customers can apply for a moratorium of up to six months subject to conditions for their housing, vehicle and 
personal financing. Well, commenting further on the matter, the bank said customers can call Bank Islam Contact Center for information, while applications for the moratorium can be made at the nearest Bank Islam branches. Meanwhile, Bank Islam's chief executive officer, Mohammad Mwaza Mohammed, said the bank is taking proactive actions to help affected customers. Well, he said the bank is aware of the difficulties experienced by their customers in dealing with the current situation, especially with the severe flood situation and the COVID-19 pandemic that is still plaguing the country. He noted that the well-being of the communities has always been one of Bank Islam's main priorities and expressed hope. The Prihatin program could help relieve their anxieties over their financial commitment during this difficult period. The Malaysian Malay Chamber of Commerce, or DPMM, Labuan Division will play a crucial role in the federal territory's economic development with the close cooperation of the local authorities and other business chambers. DPMM Labuan President Dato Suhaili Abdul Rahman said these organizations have the potential to make the private sector the engine of growth in the duty-free island. Dr. Suhaili said Labuan must maintain its competitiveness in being Malaysia's international business and financial center and regional oil and gas hub, or it would be on the losing end. Well, as such, DPMM Labuan, being a business chamber, must play a crucial role to assist in shaping Labuan's economy, develop business activities, and create employment. Earlier, Dr. Suhaili, who is the former Labuan Member of Parliament, said the business chambers do not just contribute to economic growth, development, peace and prosperity, but also towards building inclusive entrepreneurs' hip ecosystems. While he also said the success of these chambers is usually quiet, dependent on the quality of their leadership. He added that there are some chambers unintentionally electing incapable leaders, some of whom are more interested in petty internal politics and even fail to organize simple things like proper annual general meetings. Dr. Zuhaili said unless the failed leaders are quickly replaced, these organizations are more likely to suffer diminishing membership and memberships are going to fade away and that concludes updates at noon and our top story search and rescue underway for fallen indonesian flight let's pray for the victims and their families well folks tune into news at 10 p.m tonight and saloran brita rtm on my freeview and you can also stream the news via rtm's my click i'm Mohamed Amin carlos thanks for watching and have a happy sunday ahead good afternoon